So guys, now let's declare a variable using float data type, all right? So we can write something float f equal to 10.11111 up to nine times, all right? And we can declare a double variable like this, double d equal to 10.111 up to nine times. So you can see over here, I'm taking the same value and trying to store it with float and the same value with the double, isn't it? So guys, is it valid? So make sure that the double d equal to 10.9 times 1 is absolutely valid. But what about this? Well, if you talk about this value 10.9 times 1 and you're trying to store it within a float, then actually there is no problem in it. But JVM has some problem with it, all right? So this thing is never gonna be valid. This is going to give you a compilation error, all right? So now you're gonna ask me why? What's the reason for it? Well, the reason is really, really simple. Okay, so now let's learn the fun facts behind it. Well, if you want to store some values, I mean, if you want to store some numbers with decimal point, like 10.12 or 10.11 or 10.9 times 1 or whatever. If JVM finds, if you're storing a number with some decimal point, then by default, JVM gonna store it within a double, okay? So by default, the JVM gonna tag the data type as double. But if you look over here closely, we are storing a number with a decimal point and we are actually storing it within a float. So JVM find it, this value is a double value, but you are storing it in a float, that's why it's giving you error. So if you want to store a number with decimal point within a float, you need to specify that to JVM. You need to tell JVM that, hey JVM, I want to store a value like a decimal point value and I want to store that within a float, all right? So to specify that to JVM, you actually need to put a F over here in the end of this value. Now look at the following code. Float F equal to 10.111 up to nine times with the ending with a F. So this code is absolutely valid because you're specifying JVM that you want to store a float value and you are storing it within a float type, all right? So this piece of code is absolutely valid. Well, there is actually another very interesting thing that you need to know about float and double, all right? And you can differentiate both this float and double like this, all right? So actually, right now, if I want to print uh, this particular value, if I want to print this value to my output console, then how can I do this? I can do this in Java by writing this statement, system.out.println, and I want to put this variable f inside the parenthesis. Well, if you do not understand system.out.println, what does it mean and how it works, then you just remember right now that the system.out.println is used to print something in the output console. You don't need to worry what is system, what is out, what is println. We'll be talk about it very briefly in my letter or in my comment session, okay? So right now, let's only focus about how a variable works, okay? So uh, the point over here is if I want to print this f within a print statement, what is going to be happen? Well, if you want to print the f over here, the output is going to look something like this. 10.11111 and 11111. So this is actually six times one. But here we are actually putting nine ones after the decimal point, isn't it? All right, interesting, right? All right, so how about this? If you want to print the double value, all right? Uh, System.out.println and if you want to print this T, what is going to be happen? So as the output, you are going to find this value, 10 point and nine times one. So what is the conclusion? Well, if you look it closely, then you can find here you want to store up to decimal point, nine digits to a double value. And here you want to do the same thing 
nine digits after the decimal point and you want to store it within a float type all right so the point is if you want to store more than six digits in a float type then you are not going to get it in the output so for float you maximum can store up to six digits after the decimal point it's as simple as that right and if you're going to put more values after that you're going to lose it in your output all right but how about double you are getting all your nine digits over here just because double can store up to 15 digits after the decimal point all right the float can store six digits after the decimal point and the double can store up to 15 digits after the decimal point all right okay so now let's talk about one more another confusing thing for the beginners so guys if i can write double d equal to seven is it valid so well i'm trying to store a value seven which is an integer value to a double type well we know that double is used to store numbers with decimal point and we are actually storing an integer value to a double type that's d so is it valid well you need to keep in mind that you can do this all right you can store an integer value to a double data type there is no problem in it but if you're going to print d you are going to get 7.0 as output not 7 the reason why you'll get 7.0 because whatever the number that you are storing with double it's going to convert it as decimal all right so you're putting 7 but it's going to return to you like 7.0 right this is one more very important thing to understand 